Well, <clears throat> rather uh, unsurprisingly, I suppose, Mr. Toby Young, or is he a lord? Uh, he's the son of a lord. Mr. Toby Young has refused to turn up to debate us. Um, as usual, he's, he seems a bit frightened of academics. And in, in, in our case, we've also uh, invited Student Union President uh, Sunday Blake, who will be joining us in just a short while. Before I introduce our guests, I did want to make sure that we fulfill our um, obligatory... Um, I think I believe that this is obligatory, so I'm just going to put this on. Uh, let's see. We have written and we have one dream to unite all people in one great team. We have written and we have one dream to unite all people in one great team. Okay, so I think that hopefully that, that will keep us on the right side of the law here. Um, and and I, I, I'm sure that uh, the woke sorcerer knows these words as well, so maybe we can sort of sing along. Are you there? Hi. Hi. <laughs> no, Hello. That's absolutely, that's absolutely dystopian. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I had been avoiding all of that stuff, uh, and, and now you've played it, I'm... I'm traumatized. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's see if um, Carl knows the words. Carl, Carl's also with us. So, uh, hello. Hi. Hi, Carl. I'm, um, I'm still working on, on my diction. It's very uh, 1984. Uh, I was going to say, four legs are better than two. Is that the lyrics? Well, I wasn't sure if we were, uh, you know, if we had to play it or what the rules are, but um, I know that the children were expected to sing it, but um, I'm Compulsory. not sure how many actually, Compulsory. how many actually did. Um, final fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, how have you all been? I, I, I feel like I haven't... Um, I've taken the yes. last few weeks, and there's been some uh, radical change. Maybe not so radical, but changes to the format. And, uh, indeed, indeed, Carl, we've missed you uh, the past few yeah, few weeks. Um, and and this week, um, some guy is doing something somewhere. Um, <laughs> Don't ask. And yes, questions. we've 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 adjusted the format, so actually, uh, we can tell you in advance who we expect to arrive. Um, we did invite Toby Young, um, yes. but he is apparently got, um, more important things to do with his time. I don't know if he has to go to secret eugenics conferences or what okay. he has to do. It, it, would, it would be very interesting to discuss, uh, progressive eugenics. The, um, that I'd be love to debate. Experience. We'd love to debate him. Um, yeah. But it, it it was quite satisfying. I will just very quickly, um, before we bring on our, our guest, um, I will very quickly... Um, there he is. He's now number 10 on the Wall of Heroes. It now reads like the worst dinner party I can possibly imagine. <laughs> I think Indeed. I would, Indeed. Not feel I would not feel comfortable at this lunch occasion. Put it that way. Mm -hmm. This yes. seating alone would be a complete night, but like, who could you <laughs> not seat beside each other just for the, the food fight that um, would ensue? Yeah, good, good point. Um, yes. Well, I, I, so Lawrence Fox because he hasn't got any friends, has he? Although Lawrence Fox so. and Toby were both um, at the is it Batley and Spen? Oh, with, uh, George, with George Galloway. Galloway, they were all and hanging. A wonderful human. Yeah. As, yeah, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Um, in terms, wasn't it of, just like a father? It's like a fathers for justice meeting or something like that. <laughs> I can't. Like I'm not sure. It had, I, <laughs> I couldn't understand why. What put those three on the same stage as one another? Uh, but Lawrence Fox Misog is clearly misogyny. I think misogyny. Well, so, is can someone that. please do like um, a Lewis prequel or something? Someone get him in some work so he can stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
It's such a but, great um, one at the moment. Yeah. Shall we invite our guests? So, yeah, so what, yeah. what what I was explaining to Carl was our new format mm. is um, we've actually uh, invited guests um, to join us. So last last week we had Sam Hudley Brill, uh, and this week, uh, if I can bring her on, um, here is uh, Sunday Blake. Hello, Sunday. Hello. Oh, is my mic working? How are you? Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. perfect. That's Hi, great. Sunday. How Hi. are you? I'm fine. I'm sorry. I thought I was going to be a bit late because I have. Uh, literally been in back to that meeting since eight o'clock this morning um really so i'm okay <laughs> i had an That's apple good. so it's fine <laughs> it's my last two weeks in office so i'm just like oh yeah it's a nightmare but anyway oh so so and and so you're kind of what is the word when you're sort of wrapping up your legacy i suppose yeah uh, like in the last um, few weeks yeah, I mean, there's like a lot of policy stuff that's like I'm trying to wrap up, but like there is a suspicious amount of meetings that are being postponed until conveniently after I've left, and I'm a I'm a bit like, hmm, that's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, just trying to get it all done before I before I leave and have no power over anything. <laughs> yes, well, we'd be very interested to hear more about um, what you've been doing in relation to free speech. Um, but I wonder if uh, this, we were just explaining to Carl the new format. I wonder if you wouldn't mind joining us for uh, we've got our our two weeks speech. So um, two weeks worth of free speech news. And we're actually finding it difficult to narrow it down. There's so many absurd moral crises to report each fortnight. Mm -hmm. But um, I'd love I'd love it, uh, to hear your thoughts on these. So shall we sure. shall we get started with that? Uh, sure. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so first we have the Open University, and I put that in quotes, uh, Gender Critical Network. Have you come across this Sunday? No, I don't feel like I want to. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, uh, Joe, Joe, I'm sure you know about this. Yeah. So, uh, Joe Phoenix um, and some other people like Kathleen Stock, they set up this gender critical network at the Open University. Um, and everyone was like, this is just basically a sort of transphobic picnic. And the <laughs> Open University got no backlash for it and went, yeah, we're not putting our name on this. And then they were going on about being silenced yeah. um, as, as as per usual. Um, but, you know, it's obviously good that the, I mean, look at the affiliated members, like Alice Sullivan, mm. Kathleen Stark, Rose, I mean, it's just like a who's who of, of uh, transphobic academics. But well, um, then because they're already the Open University have, have used their free expression to say, actually, no, we, we don't condone this because it's hateful um so yeah well they've had to take from, the open from, university so they originally had a open university logo i think you can probably see it if you follow some of these links but they did have to remove because i think the big issue is it's fine like there already exists gender critical academic networks um but when you say that something's an open university it's like you need to get approval for that it's it's like an official designation and and i th i think it it really came into conflict with their sort of inclusion yeah. um and i think it fits very well with, with the kind of entitlement you know that 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 people seem to think they can sort of um yeah use these uh these things without permission um yeah i mean they haven't well, been shut down have they they've just been told you're not official Yes, exactly. So they're allowed yeah, exactly, to keep exactly. going. And I mean, I think that there's some issues because they're posting on this particular section of the website. But, you know, I mean, all of those things require permission. That's not uh, an issue. Uh, and, and I think that the OU's original statement said that they, um, they, you know, their academic freedom says that they can do this, but they don't personally, like, the university didn't actually support I'm not sure if they yeah. said they supported or did, if they just took a neutral stance, and and so it really wasn't a conflict of academic freedom but, as much as freedom, I think that it was freedom presented. Works both ways, you can't force the Open University to endorse exactly. this gender critical network, um, 
Uh, but of course, and, you know, as far as these people like Joe Phoenix are concerned, they've been silenced and, you know, it's been a sure. big witch hunt and a hate campaign. And it's like, no, because you're still yeah. doing your thing. Yeah, so that's our kind of... I, a lot of these end up being a bit about uh, sort of non-news, but this was another image I quite liked and wondered if you'd seen. So this is Ooh. something that they were proudly showing the uh, amount of gender-critical take-up around the world. Oh, my but God. Look Turf at that Island. shining beacon in the middle there. <laughs> that, is, that is horrendous. It's frightening, um, isn't it? It's just like the, the load star. <laughs> Not even Ireland is even turning up there. It's just <laughs> Great no, Britain no, only. No, it really is England, Turf Island. Island. So. It really okay, is let's Island. move on. So ashamed. <laughs> so next up, we have the Australia bans critical race theory. And our guest recently, uh, Evan Smith, has written some stuff about this. Let's see if I can pull that up. So she looks happy. The, yeah, sure. So have you been asked to ban critical race theory yet, Sunday? No. No, no. <laughs> uh, it hasn't come up yet. Uh, I mean, to be honest, like we we haven't been asked to ban anyone um, yet, which is why I often get confused with all of this. But, um, but it's almost yeah, like so... people aren't being banned. It's almost like yeah. most people aren't being banned. It's just the, the ideas like critical race theory being twisted beyond their actual meaning. Well, the um, only the only person who was banned um, in the last year from a student union was uh jeremy corbyn <laughs> which i find hilarious <laughs> um and that's <laughs> that's because he was trying to uh run a election rally uh, in an apolitical meeting so okay okay but you know yeah, they're, they're mean... right to ban jeremy corbyn it's up to them if they want to have him there or not you yeah know. It, do you know what it like... really annoys me like that we that people think that we can't choose who we can and can't have in our <laughs> private <laughs> organization well um, yeah so it's just, yeah, like, it's well, how, many, how many people have been sorry no absolutely i mean freedom of association is a freedom as well and and you know you're you're an independent co a community like a student's union is is not a government body it's not no. Even a university, no. it's it's and, officially and it recognized. Be... But... Mm. I wonder if Joe's broken up. Um, but shall we look at the next? We've got. We've actually normally we'd have yeah, one more bit then. of news, but um, hello, sorry, we've yeah, got I'm gonna, I'm gonna one bit of me. news here is um, the GB News launch. And they so they launched with their wo war on wo woke straight straight out of the gate, but what I was really uh, uh, um, appreciated was that they got really offended by. Uh, let's see if I can pull this up. They got really offended <laughs> by <laughs> the um. <laughs> so people kept like texting in all of their different um what is it like the uh fake names uh, and so clear, then the, clear, to clear torres was one of them as well uh, yes and, exactly um, mike o mike ox mike ox long <laughs> 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 sorry i'm such a child i just this is brilliant <laughs> well yeah and so they were uh, uh, yeah so this fellow um i don't know who the he Oh no! This is someone from Hugh Janus, but um, this person, <laughs> this this presenter was like um, so offended. He said, "This is ridiculous. This is a serious." Pro <laughs> so, uh, but most places, I would imagine, there was it was just a complete chaos. Uh, the launch of GB News, I th um, and then eventually, but it's, the, it's um, a bit like the whole Boris Johnson thing, like. Boris Johnson, the clown, you know, and it's actually really dangerous, and you get distracted by this clownish. Well, I'm not, I'm not exactly scenario. sure because, well, because I think, um, what is it? Um, I think because Fox News when it launched, because that's basically what they're trying to do. They're trying to do Fox News for Britain, right? Um, mm -hmm. But Fox News was very slick. I mean, it was like very well produced but here you have um andrew neil quit at some point recently oh. um 
but this is what I was interested in from a free speech point of view. So the culture secretary, Oliver Dowden, has warned that the boycott of advertising shows democracy is being undermined. And so he's, he's calling on, he's saying that the fact that there's a, a boycott of GB News is like a threat to democracy. Mm. So that you got that's Koperberg. Is it, is it not just the invisible hand of the market though? That's what I thought that was. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, and I, why are you I, getting I, yeah, a culture okay. secretary to defend this like junk TV show? Yeah. But we're not allowed to decide what we boycott. That's against democracy. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's not undemocratic. A boycott is democracy, though. A boycott is literally <laughs> democracy. That's, oh, it just drives me insane. I just feel like this is, this is kind of a... It's kind of what we're experiencing in student unions at the moment, where it's it's free speech as long as that speech is saying what we think. Um, I've actually yeah. said yeah. this to the Department for Education multiple times. I get actually quite annoyed about it because it everything, any kind of dissent or argument or rebuttal is framed as cancelling, which drives me insane. So I remember I got dragged into this. I actually had I got FOI'd, all this kind of stuff because I'm I don't know where people whatever but like we had this thing where one student tweeted uh about claire fox um not coming like baroness fox mm. whatever and um which is you know the students are allowed to tweet they weren't affiliated with the university other than being a student they didn't have an official role in the guild all this kind of stuff and it has mm. become a six month thing where claire fox was apparently tried to was no platformed by extra guild and i was like she wasn't no platformed the student tweeted a critique of her politics like she wasn't no platformed he wasn't even calling for her to be banned um it was one student out of twenty seven thousand, and mm. i feel like it's not about freedom of speech anymore it's about i want to come to a university and i want the students to sit in dutiful respect of my opinions and if they mm -hmm. don't do that yeah, it's, um, then that's an affront to my freedom of speech and it's like yeah it's, but it's, it's, it's not like it's, i think they want the freedom from criticism which is, I mean, that, that yeah. world doesn't exist. Yeah, but also, like, that student had their freedom to say what they wanted to say, but apparently they didn't, isn't it? So it's not about free speech, and it never has been. Yeah, and so I suppose um, we can we can actually come back to the final story, because it's that really, the, the last story is just an introduction for next uh, the next program, so we'll come back to that. But why don't we shift on to... Um, Asking Sunday a bit more about because we've been following, for example, Gavin Williamson uh, producing these uh, higher education bills. The Office for Students keeps doing these regulations of different things. And we're kind of looking at it from, let's say, an academic point of view, although we're also just kind of laughing at it because if you didn't laugh, you'd cry. But, um, but if. Um, if you think about it from the st we, what is it like from the student union's point of view? Because so many of these regulations are directed right at the students, and the, and mm. it's it's sort of like you're getting the brunt of this, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, we don't really have uh, like at the moment. I feel most for one for the students because we get kind of like put in the media, and you know the thing that happened at Magdalen College in Oxford is an example of this kind of. Um, media but also government mandated bullying of young people um i think gavin williams actually tweeted about the decision of some postgrads in their private common room um mm. and that frightening me because i actually have a lot of students come to me and say that they don't want to come to events and they don't want to participate in debate because they're um targeted by the media yeah uh, mm. who is and he I think now that online, you get a lot of people turning up to like AGMs and stuff because obviously they go for the links that we post um, and then things are just blown out of proportion. It's a real, um, it's not a very nice place to be as a young person. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, have I frozen? I keep seeing you guys freeze. Am I freezing? Do I need to move closer to my It mind? was, it was, but it's okay. I think we're picking it up. It's okay. Um, let me message Eric. I think I'm freezing. Um, 
Well, I think I think what you were what you were pointing out was that Sorry, the students just, are, are 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 getting th- sort of threatened in some of these instances, and and you know your responsibility might may or may not be to protect free speech in the exact way that the government seems to want, despite already having loads of protections in place. But you also have a responsibility to protect these students who are afraid to speak up, afraid to attend things. Um, is it, and and may or may not be kind of um, challenged or or attacked by social media. Is that right? Right. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. I'm just I guess I am you close to my Wi-Fi. Sorry, I was <laughs> okay, not doing very well. Great. No mind. worries. It's always a issue of proximity. Yeah, yeah. But um, um I think yeah, like, it just sounds like the, it's it's actually a bit of a minefield of all the different legislations at the minute. So obviously like we've still got prevent, which is like mm. a, a minefield alongside this new um freedom of speech legislation. Um but not mm-hmm. only do we have that, we have we have the charity commission always like on our like behind us being like why is this person spoken what is this about is this really part of your charitable objectives because obviously we're a registered charity and i did actually get a letter from one of the letters i've received from um toby young uh, criticizing an event and i i replied to him saying that your issue isn't with me your issue is with the charity commission this is this is us having to abide by charity commission guidelines and the people i really feel for are the you know, the 18 grand a year activities coordinators who have to navigate this absolute minefield on very little training. Mm. No way are they paid enough in student unions to be under the intense media scrutiny that they're under. But also Mm. it's it's student leaders. So I get, um, you know, 18, 19 year olds contacting me trying to put on their first ever event. And they've got someone like Toby Young throwing the, you know, the, the supposed law book at them. And they're terrified of doing that. They've also... You know, they're looking at the Equalities Act that there's so much legislation at the minute, which is which is the irony of all ironies is that it's bloody libertarians who are coming over and saying, here's are all these regulations that you need to abide by. And it's like, oh, OK, sorry, I didn't realize you guys were into all of that. But OK, the 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 real leaning on the big state to come down on student unions from these people is terrifying and quite hypocritical as well. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, because it's yeah. kind of like, well, how is it like the libertarian position? Like, let's just use as an example of like the anti-vax stuff that people want. This like libertarian position of, you know, just walk around with your masks off and I should be allowed to do whatever I want. But then the fact that no one wants to listen to them, it's like no, we're not free to do that. Right. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's it's that kind of thing, you know, no one has to listen to you talk at student union, no one has to turn up to your stag do, right? Like, these are things that people <laughs> sort of seem to think are, you know, it. I, I mean, yeah, I don't... Well, it's a bit like Eric Kaufman with the eating lunch. It's like, there is no universal right to have friends. So it's like, you say a bunch of bigoted stuff, you lose your friends... You mm-hmm. lose, like, people don't want to oh. watch your movies or read your Harry Potter books well, anymore. You know, but it's like, this, sorry, that's, that's your choice. Like, we get this Hadley Freeman was talking about time. this. In the, yeah. Hadley Freeman Hadley was f- talking about it in The Observer on, on, on The Guardian last week, you know. Oh, I've got all these gender critical views and people don't want to be my friends anymore. It's like, well, maybe they realized that maybe they don't want to be friends with people that deny the basic humanity of other people. Like, yeah. So, Every single Tough. year, at, every single year, and it's going to start happening now because obviously terms ended. There's always like a, a, a student who's a right wing student, Tory student, whatever. I mean, we've got the biggest conservative association in the country, so I don't think it necessarily comes from Exeter. But I do see some, you know, students who are at like relatively like left wing campuses who will go and say, "Oh, I'm a, I'm a conservative at a, a, a university, and I don't get invited to any parties," and I'm like. Well, that's you don't get an invite to parties. Like that's, that's not you can't complain to us about that. And I think one of the things. So I'm I'm 
I would say that I've got more of a liberal stance to freedom of speech than some of my like maybe left wing counterparts. And I, mm -hmm. um, you know, am like uh, two points actually to make. One, I am a socialist. And I think <laughs> the absolute attempt to cancel me this year from multiple different people, quite high profile people in the um, media as well, not for anything I've done, but because of my belief in in socialism is so mm. ironic because I'm like so you're saying that people shouldn't hold public office because of their personal political beliefs when right. it's a socialist student oh. mm, that's very interesting um, but I am quite liberal in freedom of speech and that you know if someone has got the academic credentials and they can come to campus and talk about their work that's absolutely fine mm -hmm. um, the fact that the majority of people who are undermined and are wrong with certain things I think that and I've said this on the radio a few times um, that, you know, if you've got an opinion and it's, a, it's an unpopular opinion, that's, mm -hmm. that's your responsibility. I'm a vegetarian. I don't think anyone should eat meat. I genuinely don't believe that. But that's not a very popular opinion. And I cannot be bothered to argue for it. I can't be bothered because I know that everyone will go, you know, you're wrong Sunday. I'm not being silenced by going, oh, if I say you shouldn't eat meat, everyone, you know, I can't even or, say it. Because or it seems arguing. like if, if people then ate meat and you said oh i'm being silenced because everybody's still eat. it's like right yeah they 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 were it's so obviously not their interest to actually have free speech they just seem to want yeah. everyone to do what they want them to do but that's that's politics you know like you need to convince people you can't just yeah and I'm, yeah. I also can't be bothered to convince people. And I think if you've got an unpopular opinion, you can't be bothered to defend it. Or you can't intellectually defend it. That's your problem. It's no one else's. Um, yeah. yeah, but you would also have the right, Sunday, to say that you didn't want to be friends with people who ate meat. Um, right. And I, might, and I might find that as a meat, well, as an ex-vegetarian, um, sort of, I eat everything. I might say, well, that's a little bit harsh, Sunday. I don't really like that. But I'd have to accept that you didn't want to be my friend, right? So, it's it, it's or didn't exactly want to eat with you as, because you know yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. Table. yeah. but but ultimately I think, I think the reason these Tory students don't get invited to parties is because they're not very nice people yeah outwardly independent of outwardly, their political anything to do with how they with how they vote exactly oh, or their political this beliefs. is a really it good point actually. Out, this yeah. is also a unpleasant. really good point that you're touching on is about the fact that every single student union has a code of conduct and oftentimes you will get someone who will come and they want to speak and they're transphobic and I'll say you can't come and speak because the last time you came you shouted penis at trans students and therefore you're not coming and they will go oh because of my gender critical feminism they're not letting me speak and i'm like you know it's nothing to do with your gender critical feminism it's because you were shouting penis at students and it becomes this kind of conflated thing where someone who is not being asked to speak is quite an unpleasant person it suddenly becomes that it's because of their unpleasant views normally both of those things go together so it can like you know be quite blurred but there are, yeah. it really annoys me that when someone has defied our code of conduct Mm -hmm. um, and this is where Gavin Williams is really annoying me, is that he is, on, he is asking universities to come down very strongly on students who intimidate speakers. And he is saying, you need to punish students who intimidate speakers. Mm -hmm. But he has proposed no code of conduct for speakers. So that puts us yeah. in a situation where students have to, have to behave themselves, whereas another student, whereas a speaker can come and behave however they want. And if we turn around and say, that's actually quite unpleasant, we don't want you here that mm. under this new bill we could be fined for that and that's completely and from a student perspective that's completely unfair um well and also is. i mean it, also it should be up to you to set up your own rules for if you want to have a debate like let's say you even want to have a controversial debate um as you said you know you could set up standards of academic evidence or um you know civil discussion um but it's it seems as though uh so for example with the gender critical feminists um and i i hesitate to call it feminist gender critical activists um they they are starting to say well we have a protected belief right and so you can't discriminate against their belief that sex matters or no, no one's denying that sex matters, but that they think that they should um, take people's rights away according to sex, right? So 
they want they believe that but no one is stopping them from believing that no one is coming in it's not like a church yeah. or a religious intolerance but if you manifest it's in the same way like you can't um you know you can't produce you can have homophobic beliefs but you can't then engage in homophobic behavior in the workplace like that and this is what once you manifest it it's like you have the regulations of this is allowed behavior this is not Mm -hmm. you're free to do it in your own time but i don't understand why student unions can't have the same rights as everyone else where you know even a place of business it's like if someone came in and started shouting penis at people like you would say sir this is a wendy's can you please leave (laughs) and like get out of here (laughs) You know? But when you shout penis at me, I'm just going to go, whatever. If you shout that at a trans person, that, that's so yeah. offensive. Um, yeah. So it's not about saying penis. It's about the fact that you've intended that. to be. And this is what the whole my force had to think. Rest of the she's saying, my beliefs are protected. It's like, well, a protected belief is also flat earthism. So the bar is quite mm-hmm. low. But also the fact is that Maya Forstater repeatedly made transphobic comments. Her colleagues uh, asked her to stop because it was offensive. And people defended her saying, oh, but she had no trans colleagues. It's like, well, straight people can be, can be straight. Well, uh, cis people can be offended by this as well. But also we could have trans colleagues in future. And so it wasn't anything to do with her beliefs. Well, and also going back to Sunday's point, it's like. And going back to Sunday's point, it's like she's being offensive intentionally. Like whether or not you're against the views, it's like, I don't particularly want to work with someone who's intentionally offending everybody left and right. Mm. Like, that person's just a nasty person. Yeah. Uh, if they can't stop well, offending people, it's like, okay, maybe if you're a stand-up comedian and that's your job, but if your job is, is you know, to deliver the post... Um, I, think, I think one of the issues that we have, and I've, I've mentioned this in University Senate and University Council quite a few times, that, like, there is a co- there is a kind of wave of anti-intellectualism at the minute that's coming onto university campuses via student mm. unions, and it comes from people who have had mum's net blogs. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sat here thinking, like, do you know what? Like, I had to get free A-stars to come here. Like, how dare you think that because you've got a mum's net blog that you have a right to come here? And that sounds really elitist. I, you know, I'm not elitist. Like, I actually think, well, I won't tell you what I think about Russell Group as a, as a, like, whether. But, like, <laughs> I, like, it just annoys me because I think, again, it comes back down to this double standard that we expect students to be, to, to, to demonstrate intellectual rigor, to have these academic credentials, to, to adhere to different, like, behavioral codes. But the people who are coming to speak at these universities, I mean, like, to- Toby, I mean, his dad called him, called up Oxford to get him in right like he didn't actually get in I think <laughs> like that's like I mean, again I, Young, we, it's just mediocre yeah. he's a mediocre right man. exactly <laughs> and I'm like none of you are intellectual heavyweights none of you can defend your arguments and you're coming here and and screaming at students who've had to go through you know a levels who've had to like consistently hand in essays to like like you know defend their own opinions but you're allowed to mm-hmm. come here and just shout penis at us like it is, mm, like, mm. The, and the, the worst thing about Exeter is we have had Katie Hopkins, we've had all these horrendous people. There is not a week that doesn't go by that I don't have a society coming to me going, we can't get anyone to come and speak for us. No one will come and speak for us. We've asked academics and they won't come speak because they don't want to speak at Exeter. And I think, okay, so what we've done now is we've put ourselves into a situation where students are not accessing expert opinions on the topics that they want to explore because we have ruined our reputation so much that all we've got is scraping the bottom of the barrel of people who hang around on mum's net. Like, what and then you get people in government going oh freedom of speech and student unions well the real freedom of speech or the real like academic rigor has been taken away from us because no Mm. one wants to come here anymore because of you know the level of intellectual sort of weight that we have which is not very high um and and there will always be students um you know the more the more kind of privileged students who who see it as like a bit of a joke, you know, how far can we push the limits? Who's the most outrageous person we can get? And to them, it's like a bit of a joke. But like, there are students who really want to explore these issues. I'm, I always have the opinion that anything I think can be proven wrong. Any opinion I hold Mm -hmm. might be wrong. And I've turned up to multiple debates on campus where I'm like, right, I actually want this person to prove me wrong. 
and every single time I've left disappointed because they haven't been able to because it's become a sort of combative public school slinging match this is actually one of the reasons I personally don't I won't do debates myself because I just don't see Mm. it as a format that that facilitates intellectual inquiry properly um so I do think student unions have really backed themselves into a corner of like ideological black and white mudslinging um I mean maybe that's maybe that's our role maybe that's our charitable objective I don't know (laughs) um yeah I um I did want to actually mention as well that um one of the one of the issues that we have with student unions and freedom of speech is how much it's like a, an incident will be reported upon in a way that's like not what happened so there is a list somewhere which is called like the banned list and it has like every single incident of you know being banned for example the baroness fox is on there um the there was another there's there's other two other events that happened to exeter when i looked on it and i was like but that person came and spoke <laughs> like they weren't no platformed um and i that right, even right. happened in if you actually read the white paper from um i think ian mansfield actually wrote it but gavin williams um published it under his name if you read the white paper they actually cite some incidences so one of the mm-hmm. examples is amber rudd for example the whole train thing with amber rudd which was again it wasn't actually even a student union that did that that was actually like somewhere in the university um and that amber i mean again we we put on 300 events a week in a student union a week week. we put yeah we have we have 300 societies who do Mm -hmm. between one and three events a week so um most societies will have like one public one external speaker event a week um the the kind of logistical nightmare of organizing that is really frustrating. So our debating society has four speakers a week because they do a panel mm-hmm. debate on a Friday night. And for each of those spots, they will send a blanket email of about 40 invites. So mm-hmm. they'll send 40 invites to say, this is the topic. If you want to get back to us and speak, let us know. And because of the time it takes agents to sort of respond, they might get like six replies saying, yes, this person can do it in which case they have to look at who they've invited and go, right, well, here's where the best expertise is, here's where the best debate will come from, two people they'll say, no, you can't speak. And that's that isn't that's not politics. That is just the practical realities of event organization. Like, there's no politics in that at all. And mm-hmm. often now what we're seeing is people would go, like an MP would go, oh, okay, no worries. Well, I'm happy to speak another time. Thank you. Mm. The culture has escalated to the point now where either event organized organization is really slow and sluggish and societies aren't putting on as many events as they want, which means that that kind of like extracurricular education is being dampened because they're having to invite one speaker at a time, get get the rejection or the exception. And now, you know, they can't send those blanket emails out because one person being told, actually, we've already got four speakers will go, Oh, you've no platformed me. You you invited me, and now you've no platformed me. And this mm. is one of the issues with the legislation: is the legislation is saying that any invitation that's been evoked, revoked, sorry, is a no, is a cancellation. But that that happens three hundred times a week in every student union in the country. Right. I said this on Times Radio the other week. I said you invited me to come and speak with um, I can't remember his name, Evan something. He's great. He's on Twitter all the time, but. They invited me to come and speak on freedom of speech. And right. within fi- 15 minutes until the episode, they said, oh, actually, Sunday, we've got an academic. You can't come on. Now, had I been part of the free speech union, I could have screamed no, can- like, I- no platforming, right? Because I've-, I've been uninvited. Um, right. Obviously, I know the realities of event organization. I know that often speakers will get back to you. Some won't, then they will. Some will accept, some won't. You'll duplicate you know, people. And it just really frustrates me because I'm thinking, does no one in government actually speak to student unions and realize like how big a ship we're running here? Like mm-hmm. I I get accused of canceling all the time as the president, often events I didn't even know happened because I don't know every event that's happening. I'm like, oh, did that person yeah. come and speak? Did they get canceled? Oh, no, they got canceled because they got someone else to come speak. Um, mm. So, yeah, I'm. I'm going to stop ranting now, but it just frustrates no, me. No, so but it, I mean, it goes back to this thing that we've talked about quite a lot. It's kind of. No one seems to, no one has a right to a platform, just like no one has a right to friends, you know? So, um, as you, as you pointed out, you know, it's, it's not exactly a, 
piece of cake to organize an event. I mean, the things happen. You a lot of times you have to book four people, expecting one to drop out, and you you end up going with three. It's 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 you know it's a bit like it's just really to think that being disinvited from something is the worst possible possible thing. And and the other the other thing I was curious about is because. <clears throat> There's this really, there's this like huge exaggeration. So you mentioned that there's this, um, is it a list of um, no oh, platforming events yeah. that yeah. that that really none of them none of them happen and and they seem to be really almost desperately trying to find evidence. I don't know if anyone else saw Matthew Goodwin is out there sending around a survey. Did you come right. across this, Carl or Joe? No. No, Matt Goodwin. Um, Matt Goodwin. I think, yeah, Matt Goodwin. Like he's sending um, survey out to all these different academics with like extremely sort of leading questions, and they they seem was to be desperate recent? for evidence. Yeah, it was like last week. So they're like desperately searching for evidence of this like chilling effect. But you know, when you're talking about three hundred events, mm. even if. Um, even if like one of those was canceled across the year, and you're saying the only one was Jeremy Corbyn, <laughs> and it's a bit like um, you know, however many f flights go off every year, and and mm. and, and yeah. such a tiny, and tiny, it, it, or it's like getting struck by lightning or something, and and it's like sure you could set up some uh, some you know defenses against people, that i suppose but at a certain people, point there's still going to be someone gets struck by lightning but these people once. are precisely the people like toby like toby young or like um etc etc and these are precisely the people who end up writing to people writing people's employers uh because these people have said something about them on twitter that they don't like trying mm. to get them sacked from their jobs trying and and so it's it's it is a supreme irony, isn't it, that these people go on about being cancelled, but ultimately they're so busy trying to shut everybody else down for having a, yeah. a different opinion. Um, and also, like, it might be rude to disinvite Amber Rudd from a talk. It might be rude, but if if I invite someone for dinner and they turn out to be a dick, I might say, "Well, don't fucking come." So I think the, the point that I, I make as well about like gender critical feminism is that like. There's so much focus on the person getting cancelled, but when we talk about freedom of speech and we talk about th you know things that can't be said, that's not true. Like I've said so many times that you know I see transgender rights, gender critical feminism. Like I don't want to say debated because I don't think it's a debate, but like I've seen these issues around gender identity, around what what is a woman, like what what does being a woman feel, or you know who can define that. You know these are these are conversations that are happening very delicately very well being held in seminar rooms all over campus in critical theory pathways in you know it, these are discussions that are being had it doesn't have to be this combative big show debate to be talking about these things and it really annoys me that because we turn around to some people and say actually the way that you present this argument is not a way that we will tolerate does not mean that we're not looking into those issues as students right these are mm -hmm. things that we talk about in fact we often have debates that are like controversial you know well not debates mm. we often have events that are controversial and this hyper focus on the debate and that kind of real kind of uh, yeah like hyper focus on the individual the person who gets cancelled okay but what they were going to come and say the argument that they were going to make hasn't been cancelled that's still being made people are still making it we're just going with someone who's better and more qualified to be talking about that um yeah and just going back to the i think we, we sort of started in this area of the discussion where it, it it's it's sort of like well the, the debate is still going on uh the uh the the idea that the the person is is as you're saying like the the person needs to be heard it, it's a, it's just a bit um yeah, I guess it's just one of those sort of things where, um, where, where, where do we, where do we draw the line here? Where, there's, where do we start to think? There's a differentiation, isn't there, between um, the argument being having value and being need, needed to be heard, 
and the individual yeah. being needed to be heard. And I, I, th I think there's, um, I think it's important to make a separation between those two things. So the the, the debate about, um, for example, uh, critical race theory, right? That's a debate that, if you like, needs to be had. But if someone mm -hmm. kind of comes in and abuses another person because they are not agreeing with them on it, that individual doesn't have the right to debate with everyone else. So this, this conflating of the issue and the individual, I think, is always, is always the point. Because then it becomes about um, uh, know, the, the individualism, and that becomes yeah. the narrative again, rather than the actual issues which need to be discussed. I think debated. also, like, at some point, like, there are these issues that are debated over and over and over again. But, like, yeah. at some point, we are going to have to come... Like at some point there was a debate over like whether the world was flat or round. I mean, I know that still does happen in some places, but like <laughs> general consensus is that we have a globe that we live. That's the that's the shape of our planet. And sometimes I sit and think like everyone bangs on about these like contentious issues that we have to debate. But like, oh, um, everyone thinks this now and no one thinks the other way. And I'm like, but at some point as a society, we do have to have a premise that we all agree on. And then we move on and start debating other things. Like at some point, we mm. had to agree that the world was a globe. Like that. Like yes, at some point that would have been hotly debated in universities. But like this mm. idea that we always have to entertain both opinions—that's not—that's not the trajectory that knowledge takes. The, like mm. eventually, we agree and on think, things, right? Mm. And I think in the example of, of gender critical feminism, gender critical anti trans activism, whatever we call it. I think they, they don't have anything new to add. They don't have any new arguments. It's the same stuff that gets trotted out. So if they had new stuff to say, um, and they were able to say that in a way that they didn't end up um, being cruel to transgender people, mm -hmm. I'm sure we could find a way. But they don't have anything new to say. The same old stuff they trot out time and again. Well, and they, so they I sort think of you're say... right. I mean, at what point do we move on and, you know... Mm. This is we've done this, you know. Yeah, well, and and there's kind of uh, this idea that oh, the, because they care that sex matters, and it's like no one, no one is saying that it doesn't. You know, like if if you miss it, it, this goes back to Sunday's point earlier about you know the quality of the intellectual discussion is also a factor into whether someone gets platformed or not, and a lot of these gender critical arguments are just so weak and very easily kind of, if they're actually confronted with, um, with like genuine evidence. So they, they, they much prefer to have these arguments off on the side and they're, and they kind of create these straw men about the sort of like the gender ideology or whatever. Um, and, and, and this is kind of a common, uh, sort of rhetorical move. So they're doing the same thing with, critical race theory and like if you when you were talking earlier about flat earth versus round earth you know like it's the equivalent of someone saying well at some point somewhere the earth is flat you know like there's a field and it's flat so i found this one example of that but it's like well is that the so you can always find an example of some critical race i don't know uh yeah. Uh, instruction Seriously. that's like really ab uh, absurd. Like they they keep pulling out this Yale person who 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 was like a guest speaker at Yale who said white people are psychopathic or something like that, and it was like wacky. She, like she was like this wacky psychologist, but I mean the amount of times that that's been trotted out as like this yeah. shows that there's like a communist me. plot to take over the whole school system of America. It's like if that was happening. I feel like there'd be a lot of evidence of the, of this giant plot that you're describing. I think like we get so we get students get framed like that all the time. They get sort of put into this like crazy like woke like whatever. And I think the thing that the thing that frustrates me about it is like okay, just to like declare like I I think taking down a painting of a monarch is absolutely fine. I think like you're within your right to do that. <laughs> but like the point that I always come back to is a lot of the time these are teenagers and they have been away from home for the first time and you know what like when you first start like believing in something or finding out a po like this is why people put like you know this is why students put up post political posters in their rooms and stuff like you do 
become involved in it and you do test out the limits of that politics so if you are anti-monarch you you know testing out the limits or testing out that ideology when you first encounter a university by putting it into action okay i have read about colonialism and the way the monarchy upholds it and as a fresher i'm going to i know that they'll post brads but this hypothetically i'm going to take down this portrait of a queen absolutely within your right to do that like as you come to university and you explore your identity you explore your beliefs and you test them out in a safe and unassuming way and unassuming environment what i don't appreciate is the global surveillance of young people finding out who they are and testing their beliefs and making out that it somehow impacts the rest of the world it doesn't at all i mean mm. i'm i used to be like when i was an undergraduate i really got in that was the first time i came in, in contact with feminism and i probably swung a little bit far <laughs> you know like banging on about free bleeding and all that rubbish that you start when you first start to like listen to jermaine greer now had the Sun newspaper come across my tweets or my Facebook page, like I would be one of those insane woke people, right? I mean, yeah, I'm a little bit mm. more moderate now. But my point is that you are either pro people coming to university and testing out dangerous ideas and arguing them, or mm. you're not. And yeah. if you're saying that removing a painting of a monarch is a dangerous idea, well, lo and behold, you're the ones who said that we should be entertaining dangerous ideas. But now it's a dangerous yeah, idea that you don't like. We can't be testing out dangerous ideas. Yeah, so yeah. what is it? What is your argument? Because all I'm seeing is that you want students to come and say something racist and transphobic and you say that's fine. But anything else that's dangerous is off the cards. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, and, and I suppose this goes back to this question because I think probably all of us are generally on the left side of politics and whatnot. But, I mean, I'm not... I'm not advocating people get cancelled, you know, like for tweets from 2009. I mean, I guess that there are some people out there who are really like, oh, find this offensive thing that this person has, has done ages there's ago. A, there's a good example but, from the last couple of weeks, actually. Billie mm -hmm. Eilish. I don't know if you know the singer. Okay, I heard... Actually, I mean, she's only, but, he's only 19 or something. And a few years ago... She, she was miming along to some lyrics or something. There's a video of her miming along to some rap lyrics with the N-word in. Um, and there mm -hmm. was all this outrage. And, and it's like people going, Billie Eilish has been cancelled. It's like no one has cancelled her. She came out and she said, that was wrong. I was young. Let's move on. We all didn't say stuff that we regret. But they've made this big thing about her being cancelled and she really hasn't been. Um, so, you know. Yeah, it's like that's, that's criticised. I mean, I feel like she was criticised for something and yeah and she came you know out and there's a value of publicly criticizing her to say hey kids try not to do that like and she was maybe very you can learn a lesson to like not do that and then she's even saying like yeah that was not cool i mean i even saw something grown up. uh like but of course does everyone been know no. does everyone know sarah silverman the comedian um, so she used to have i think maybe either a podcast or she has one now and back in 2005, there was the show with Paris Hilton on. It was like um, The Simple Life, when Paris yeah. Hilton was really popular. And so Sarah Silver Silverman was like really just nasty. Like she was a comedian and it was just her stand-up routine and she was just like mean. And I guess now, 15 years later, um, Paris Hilton said, you know, that really hurt my feelings, even though it was like... I was a public figure. And then Sarah Silverman was like, you know what? Like, she's absolutely right. Like, at that time, 2005, it was just, like, nasty. Like, people could be mean. And that's what people thought comedy was. But now that's not the case. It's, it's like, it's not funny. And, and, and that's just, like, things change. Um, and I feel like a huge part of this is, like, because we haven't even gotten into comedy other than Lawrence Fox. And I mean, I sometimes wonder if Toby Young is a com comedian, but he's just so horrifying. It's diff. I mean, but I, I mean, I think, I think that's, you know, how are things supposed to change if you can't hold people to new standards of mm -hmm. like, you know, we, we find this offensive, uh, you know, 
Maybe you'd like to well, reconsider. I'm just glad it wasn't around when I was yeah, a teenager. Same. You know what I mean? Same. <laughs> you know, I've escaped a lot of that because, you know, we all did stupid things. And, you know, it's about saying, I'm not that, you know, I've learned, I was young, let's move on. Uh, but it's people not being able to admit they were wrong that caused a lot of yeah. these problems doubling down. Look at Naomi Wolf. You know, <laughs> she well, could have admitted well, she yeah, was wrong. Instead of, instead of just having to kind of double down and double down until she's now I think a conspiracy. I think there is something to be yeah. said around like, you know, like having open and really difficult conversations. I think one of the things that I am always really grateful for is a seminar that I read um, on. It was Anne Foster Sterling. I don't know if you know her, but she's done some really great work. She's a biologist and she's done a lot of work on like chrom like sex at a chrom chromosome level. Mm -hmm. um, and she talks about how actually this this idea of male and female based on genitals is is, is not true and if you go to a chromosome level there's actually a, you know you can get women with y xx all this kind of stuff and how that's a lot more common than we think um and our perceptions of gender are, anyway i i'm not i have to say i find the whole gender thing really boring now just because it's been going around in circles for so long but like i i remember that seminar was a really difficult conversation because i was really new to the whole idea of like gender identity and sex and stuff and as far as I was aware you know women were oppressed on their sex and all this kind of stuff and I think that within that seminar if if I had not had that space to say well this is what I think you know transphobic assumption and someone go well, actually this theorist argues this and this theorist, you know if I hadn't have had that space I wouldn't have become a trans ally right because I would have had mm -hmm. that space to realize and I probably would have just held that to myself and whatever and like I think that um, one of the things I fear and I feared a lot about when COVID hit and everything went online was that those safe spaces to say things and challenge things and come out with opinions that actually you don't hold, but you're trying to muddle through this really confusing world. Um, I mean, I um, came from like quite a working class background and even theory itself was like, what, we just get to sit and talk about this stuff? Like <laughs> women, women... Uh, stay at home and look after the kids and men go to work and that's the only delineation that I've ever come across right um, and she that was such a, that was such an important seminar to me but one of the things that I really fear is that now that everything's moved online is those dangerous discussions that are going to be being had are they going to be screenshot are they going to be mm -hmm. is there going to be a record of them somewhere because I don't agree with what I said in that seminar I remember it and I remember it changed my opinion but like if someone scre like it was in person but if someone screenshot it and published it I'd be like well of course I don't think that anymore yeah. because I've had five years of education since well, yeah um, well and isn't that exactly what the uh, this idea of being confronted with dangerous ideas it's so that you could change your mind but it strikes me as all of these efforts that these conservatives are all of these regulations are doing the exact opposite that they're they're going to discourage you from having these conversations because there won't be any safe spaces for you to say you know i i can't stand that point of view and then if someone says oh they've just they've just told me i'm a bigot um and now i get to sue the university mm. It's kind of like, well, it strikes me as, as this this wasn't actually broken before. S students and universities managed these difficult conversations for basically like hundreds of years, thousands of years. Now, not everything about universities are perfect, but on this, this thing, I feel like I've not seen evidence that this is like a problem that's broken that needs sorting. But I don't know, maybe maybe you have a different view from the... From the front lines, Sunday. I mean, all that's happened now is that we are struggling to get students to stand for election. We've got committees like Debate and Society, the student newspaper, who are having to rerun elections multiple times because no one wants to stand up and put themselves forward. Um, I mean, I've definitely, like, the amount of press... I get press requests all the time for comment, and I just mm. no comment all of them because I, I cannot be bothered. Um, but I think it's I think that it's created a free freedom of expression crisis and the freedom of mm. expression crisis is in the students because they're not getting 
they're not getting the the education the, the extracurricular education that they have a right to mm, um mm. i mean these are popular societies the debating society is older than the university it wasn't part of the university and then it became part of the university you know these are old societies that are struggling to get students to stand up because the criticism is so hostile and mm -hmm. The regulations are so confusing, especially when you start talking about suing people. I mean, one of the reasons that we do mess up, and we do mess up sometimes because we have two activity staff for 27,000 students, right? Um, is because we are so like underfunded and like not well resourced. We live we live off you know the mercy of our block grants from our parent institutions, mm -hmm. um, who who are told that they should be fining us. If we mess up, well, I don't think we're going to put on quality debates and quality events with quality speakers if you start fining us every other week yeah. because five people have accepted a request for a four-person panel. Yeah, um, and there's only so many times David Attenborough can come and say, look at this bear walking across the field. <laughs> you know, some, like you have to just end up with really uncontroversial things, and, and I feel like that's probably the goal, is, is they just want, they actually want to shut down controversy um and 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 yeah at the same time very happy to you know have these really offensive controversial um events out there to to just get everyone overheated so um it's not i don't envy you sunday <laughs> um but i am very grateful to you for for joining us to, to give us the the point of view uh um and and you know uh if there's anything that we could do from free speech, I mean, I feel like as this show is evolving, we're kind of just starting to realize the scale of the actually the attack on free speech that we're starting to see. Uh, mm. um, and I feel like we, student unions are on the front line of that. We had one of our student magazines, actually, this this event will never not annoy me, but we had one of our student magazines wanted to write a so J.K. Rowling published that um like it was like a, an open letter or something about why she's worried about like trans people or something mm. um and one of our students wrote a response to it saying like mm. well actually what you're saying could be considered transphobic because of xyz and it went through i think four revisions through our compliance manager before eventually not being published at all and i was like why is that not being published and they were like oh we can't really call jk Rowling transphobic and i'm like but the student is arguing that she is and basically i just i will always bring that up as an example of how she's allowed to post something and a mm -hmm. student magazine is banned from responding to it like that is not critical dialogue that is not like we're not like we are doing our students a disservice mm -hmm. um you I, are. and i still get frustrated about it i still get frustrated because it was such a good piece by the student as well um right. but yeah he has very 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 uh a powerful lawyers and a lot of money to pay them and that's the problem is that she could she could sue them and say i'm not transphobic you know i just don't believe blah 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 blah, blah. that's what they're worried about lawsuits i'll say it now though jk rowling's transphobic there you are <laughs> but unfortunately that well, doesn't really help your student does it that doesn't help your your well, friend who's written this lovely piece and it's been through all these revisions well and 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 um yeah and joanne uh went to uh exeter as well that's why there's the phoenix uh order of the phoenix from the phoenix um cultural arts center down in exeter i did not know that yeah that's... and and a lot of the there's what is it gandy street with the cobbles okay uh, so that was okay. that was like one of her inspirations for some of the harry potter set so I came to Exeter to do my master's, right? And I was in Oxford when I did my undergraduate. And I have had two sets of freshers weeks now where I walk around a city being told the parts that have inspired certain parts in Harry Potter. And I'm like, yeah. are you sure? Because I Well, I mean, Oxford. Oxford Oxford has basically turned into um, a Harry Potter gift shop uh, at yes. this point. I mean, <laughs> they have yeah. more things to, for sale that are sort of from Gryffindor than uh from you know christchurch harry potter and alice in wonderland is the other one that they <laughs> they put everywhere as well oh and yeah. um endeavor yeah. it's all about endeavor now. oh endeavor yes of yeah, course i love it yeah <laughs> but, well um, i'm i'm wondering when endeavor will do an episode or maybe lewis i don't know maybe lewis hmm. will do an episode on Let's not, we, we on go the pro empire yeah on the pro <laughs> empire 
Well, it was Lewis and Cambridge? I can't remember. Um, no, no, no. But Lewis was, was Oxford. Lewis was also Oxford. There was one. In, he was well, anyway, a um, and Lawrence Fox. I was just thinking was about Cambridge because we could close on our on our final bit of news that we were going to look at, which was that Churchill um, College canceled the discussion about um, Churchill. So they, they, they actually um, would not discuss... So this is Cambridge after the, you know, big hoopla about being, you know, you have to tolerate all ideas and not respect them. So there was a working party examining, critically examining uh, Winston Churchill, but it has been shut down. By um, Nicholas and Soames. Nicholas Soames and then um, uh, the Master of Churchill. You see, if I was if I was Churchill College, I'd say, fine, we'll name the college then. You know, I don't think we're going to have any problem. We're still a Cambridge College. People will still come here. You know what I mean? So I'm, one uh, of one of the key figures in that was uh, Professor Priyam Vada Gopal. Um, and, and she will be joining us in two weeks' time to discuss uh, Winston Churchill. I don't know. Maybe we can ask her to either debate... The ghost of Winston Churchill, or maybe Cecil Rhodes, or both. I am maybe Nicholas George Soames. Orwell. Why not, why not Nicholas? Why not Nicholas Soames? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll check in. Um, I'll check in with her. See if she'd like to debate anyone. Because it's also uh, no longer a requirement. That's an, that's the last aspect of her. But I'm grateful to Sunday for suggesting uh, Toby Young because he's 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 give, he's sort of FOI'd you about. 50 oh times god, or a bloody it? nightmare of the FOIs, honestly. And the un- the universities, <laughs> like they get so. St- but the thing is, like, I don't really mind them because I know that I've done nothing wrong. Um, so they're always fruitful. I'm like, if you want to waste your own time, you can. Um, just as a counter counterpoint on that Churchill College, um, I got sent this tweet uh, a couple of days ago where the Churchill Project. So the Churchill Project, um, it's on. I mean, you can imagine what it is. Um, you know, historical legacy. It's on Twitter as um, at Winston C Project. And right. they've actually done a thread condemning uh, the like Lawrence Fox and okay. saying that yeah. And I've I've just sent it to you um, via DM, Eric. But like, oh, okay, they basically are talking from a, from the Churchill Project point of view, saying that actually people like Lawrence Fox and Piers Morgan, to, for for our organisation, are the most hypersensitive snowflakes because they can't handle the fact that Churchill is being criticised. But as people who run the Churchill project yes there it is um I mean they've just sort of I mean and it's quite the, the great thing about these tweets is it, it's a bit off brand but they've just sort of gone and gone do you know what you guys uh you guys are the ones who are snowflakes um which I I, I very much which enjoy, is, I enjoy yeah. having that to me in my inbox, no I think that uh, that's I think that's very true and I feel like Winston Churchill was very happy to say really offensive controversial <laughs> things and and I don't I think that he would have been if someone said that was terrible. He would have been fine with that as well. I don't. I don't think Churchill was actually a snowflake in the way that I like this uh, loser fox. <laughs> uh, that's a good. <laughs> so we'll have to check out the Churchill project, and then um, in two weeks' time, um, same time, same place, we will be speaking with Priya Gopal about what it's like to uh, not apparently be allowed to debate Winston Churchill's legacy at Churchill College, Cambridge. So, um, Sunday, thank you thank so you. so much for uh, joining us, um, Woke Sorcerer and Carl, um, as ever, a, a, a great treat, and um, we, will, we will see everyone in two weeks uh, for some more Free Speech Live. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Sunday. Thank you. Hi. Bye. Free speech. Oh.